Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. Throughout my tutorials I will teach you Java using just Notepad and the command prompt. The order in which my tutorials are organized on both my website at javacjava.com and my YouTube playlist is designed to maximize learning by building on concepts from prior tutorials. This tutorial is part three of my constructors tutorial series. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is pull up my website here, javacjava.com, click on the side menu over here and select the Java OOP tutorials. So the um, object, Java Object Oriented Programming tutorials is kind of designed to present you more um, object oriented type stuff, classes and detailed stuff about classes and everything like that as opposed to my other regular old tutorials over here which um, are more just like um, Java like core fundamental stuff. Now all these tutorials are listed over in the other tutorials as well but they're over here to kind of give you a better idea if, with related to object oriented programming. So we're going to select the constructors part 3. So in this tutorial I'll be demonstrating how we can create an object and access its members without using a reference variable. You will see this technique used often. Okay let's come down here and highlight all this code here, hit control C or right click and select copy. Let's move the browser off screen here and go down to start search, type in CMD. If you're running Windows 7 or earlier you can, tar you can go to start run, type in CMD. Once we got the command prompt open we'll type in Java C. You should see all this stuff scroll through. If you don't, go and watch my tutorial on installing the Java development kit. You want to make sure you get that installed and configured properly. Type in CLS to clear the screen, cd space backslash. cd is short for change directory, backslash tells it to go to the root. md is make directory, java, I already have that folder, but if you don't, it'll go ahead and create it for you. We'll change directories to the java folder, and we'll make a directory, and we'll just call this uh, constructor3. Okay. And we'll do notepad constructor3.java We'll paste all of our code in there and we'll go ahead and save this. So the class box here is the same class um, declaration as what was in part two of the tutorial on constructors there. So, But just to briefly go over it, with, we've got the three instant variables all private, right? And encapsulated there. And then we've got this method for uh, calculate volume, which is an int return type. And then we have our constructor here that takes three parameters, the length param, height param, width param. And it basically assigns these private variables length equal to length param, right? Height, height param, and width, width param. So that's how all those get set when the, um, when the box class is basically initialized and created into an object, the box constructor gets called and those all get um, assigned the values there. So up here in the, uh, the class constructor 3 I've got the main method entry point there, right? And there's the code block for the main method. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do a um, print out to the console. This string literal, the volume of our box is Right, and then plus, and then take a look at this syntax here and think about it for a moment there. And then we've got new box, right? And the box, we got the new operator, which as we learned from the previous constructor tutorials, the new operator returns an object reference, right? And so this box right here is basically the new operator invoking the constructor, right, for the box class. Now, once we have this as an object reference there, we can simply use the dot operator to start invoking methods on an object, right? Even though this object is not assigned to a reference variable, it doesn't need to be. And that will display the um, return value of the calculate volume method. Okay, this, this could get a little confusing here, so I'm gonna run through it. We're gonna run the whole thing, and then I'm gonna rerun through it. So now the next line, I've done the exact same thing, only I closed it in parentheses, so maybe this will make it a little bit easier to think about, right? So if we evaluate this here first, new box, 
right? The box constructor does nothing more than initialize the instance variables of length, height, and width to 5, 5, and 5, right? New returns an object reference. And so that object reference, then we can use the dot operator to invoke the calculate volume method down here, right? In which case, outside of that, right in front of the plus, we're going to actually have like an int data type returned back from this whole thing, which is the length times height times width, the calculation of these instance variables, okay? I've done the same thing here on the third line as well, right? Okay, now think really hard about this next line here. After what I discussed on the first line up here, we know that um, you know what? Let's go ahead and run this here real quick before we come down to this. Just to, just to show you how this works here. Java C, instructor 3.0. Strip off that, and let's run it. So, as we can see, the volume of our box is 100, which is 5 times 10 times 2. 50 times 2 is 100, right? The volume of this box is 125. 5 times 5 times 5. 5 times 5 is 25 times 5 is 125 and 96. 4 times 8 is 32 times 3 is 96. So you can see this, this definitely works. We are actually getting an, an int value right before this, you know, the, uh, the string addition operator right here, right, that it's adding that to the string literal. So. Now let's just think really hard about this again and we'll just drill this, this concept in there. Um, since we know we're going to be getting an int return type from the calculate volume method, we can actually assign an int, a primitive int data type to a variable called box volume A and we can use the assignment operator to assign the value we're returning from calculate volume. Okay, now without the parentheses, it makes it kind of hard to think about it there, right? But new, new returns an object reference, right? The box right here is a constructor that initializes these arguments into these parameters, and these parameters are then assigned to the local instance variables, right? So this object contains all this, and then once we've got our object at that point, we can now call the dot operator to invoke the calculate volume method. The calculate volume method will be the last thing that occurs there, and it will return an int data type, right? It returns length times height times width. And then we can use the assignment operator to assign that int value to this right here. And then we can go ahead and print it out, okay? So maybe the parentheses will help out just a little bit more in drilling this in again. I'm just gonna say it all again because it, it really does matter, you know, just over and over and over again. So the new operator, right? And you're gonna to wanna to make sure you see all of my tutorials there, especially the last three or four on this. So the new operator returns an object reference, right? The box right after that is in a box type, right? That's how it knows the new operator knows to create a new box object type based on this constructor right here. That's why the name of the constructor has to match the name of the class. That's so it, the new operator knows what to create. Now once it um, initializes that object, it goes ahead and executes everything in the constructor's code block here, right? Which, since we've passed it, well, we got these arguments of 555 five, five here, right? Those will come in as parameters to length, param, height, param, width, param. And then it will start executing everything in the box um, constructor body, right? And it'll do it top down. So it'll say length, which is, which is in fact this private instance variable here, will assign it the value that's coming in in the parameter, height and width and so on and so forth, okay? Now at the end of that point right there, right, we've got our object, it's been initialized, and we have got our reference to that object contained inside of this parentheses. All right, and if you remember from my previous tutorials, it's probably like something like box at and then a memory, some hexadecimal memory address, right? 
is actually where that reference is pointing to in memory. And then we can invoke using the dot operator the calculate volume method. Calculate volume method will get invoked down here and it will return length times height times width, which has already been set up here. Okay? And it will return an int data type. So everything coming back right before the assignment operator is an int data type. Okay? So that's where we can say box volume B. Um, this variable box volume V of the primitive int data type equals the result of this calculate volume. And then we can go ahead and print that off. So, as you can see down here, that's exactly what happened. 5 times 10 is 50, times 2 is 100, right? And 5 times 5 times 5 is 125. Okay, so let me go ahead and leave that up here for just a second there. I just want to want to leave you with, with some final thoughts on this here. Um, accessing object members without a reference variable may seem quite confusing at first. It is something you'll see quite often and you need a clear understanding on what's going on. If, they tu if this tutorial made zero sense, I would highly recommend a refresher on all of my OOP tutorials up until this point, right? So let's go ahead and close out of this and close out of that. All of my object-oriented um, tutorials are over here under the menu and Java OOP tutorials. I just recommend just taking, you know, um, this will probably take an hour tops, maybe an hour, hour or two, right? And you can get all the way back down to here, you know, and that'll just drill these concepts in. So let's go ahead and just go back to the main menu there, get that off the screen, and that concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.